bowling program that you're about to see is based on actual real life events that may prove too damning for politically correct audiences. If you're going to be offended by any of what you'll see shortly, then WHAT THE HELL ARE YOU DOING ON MY CHANNEL?! Nonetheless, the following is purely for educational, informational, and comedic purposes only. In other words, don't be a stupid shillery, okay? Be a trumpeter. Fuck off! I've got style, I've got passion, I've got rhythm. Oh, sh oh, okay. Jesus Christ almighty fuck. Oh, okay. Welcome to another episode of Scully Goes Wide. I am Kevin the Skull Anderson. And in this episode, I'm going to explain to you people why I am not... A WWE fan anymore and I'm going to put it to you bluntly and I'm going to put it to you neatly and adroitly in a way that you can understand now here's the deal you gotta promise me that you won't be offended by everything that I say because otherwise why the hell are you wasting your time viewing this So, as you know, I don't give a damn. But you already knew that. Okay. The Capital Wrestling Corporation, as it was originally known in the 1950s, was founded by a man named Roderick McMahon, an Irish-American. His son, Vincent James McMahon, took over the business after he died, and he ran it for about 25 good years. And then something happened along the way and his son, Vincent Kennedy, decided to start working for his father, James. And then things started to go downhill from there. See, Vincent Kennedy McMahon took over the business in 1980 when he named his headquarters Titan Tower. Or should I say... Titanic Tower, because WWE, as of the last seven years, has been on this downward spiral that it will never get out of. Why? Because a 74-year-old Vincent Kennedy McMahon has absolutely no idea how to function anymore. How do you get like this? I'll tell you. 1984. Howard Finkel coined the term WrestleMania. Vince McMahon decided it would be a good idea because his father, Vincent James McMahon, promised all the promoters that his son, Vincent Kennedy, wouldn't buy them out. When Vincent James died, Vincent Kennedy decided, oh, well, my father's dead, so I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna compete with the competitors. <laughs> I'm gonna take my business worldwide! Worldwide! Anyway, as you might imagine, he bought out Georgia Championship Wrestling in an event referred to as Black Saturday. And that's when everything else started to go to hell. He had a man named Terry Bollea, real name, well actually as his real name, his ring name was Hulk Hogan. And he had been working for the company since 1980. Vincent Kennedy McMahon decided to name him his number one guy. So for nine straight WrestleManias, one through nine, Hulk Hogan became the main event attraction. He became the center of all things WWE. And then WWE started to go downhill when Hulk Hogan decided to jump ship to WCW. The starting a Monday Night War that wasn't really a Monday Night War because it never really began. Because by the time the so-called Monday Night Wars started, WCW had already committed suicide about 75,000 times over because its previous owner, Jim Hurd, had no idea what a superstar or wrestler was in that time. 
Ted Turner, the founder of the Clinton Nazi Network, or commonly referred to as the Cable News Network, decided to buy WCW, which was then at the time known as Jim Crockett Promotions, in 1988, and Ted Turner decided, hmm, I'm a billionaire, I'm a wrestling fan, let's see what I can do with this. And for 13 years, he tried his best to do something with it, but for God knows what reason, I don't know what it is, he had the brilliant idea of hiring a guy named Eric Bischoff. And thus, that's when WCW died. As a collective result, everything started to go to hell, and after and nearly after a nearly year and a half reign at the top of Shit Mountain, WCW quickly fell to WWE, which was then known as WWF before they started the F off campaign. I'm, I'm just kidding, the get the F off campaign. Or get the F out campaign or whatever. Might as well have been F off. And then WWF became the top of king shit. A top of the mountain. WWF drove WCW out of business from within. Killed it from the inside out. This was Vince McMahon's grand design to send his best writer, Vince Russo, to WCW. And then it all turned to shit from there. From 2001 to 2019, WWE, as it would now be known, had no competition other than TNA, which was its next competitor, which, by the way, never really was great. Given there was a few very good pay-per-views that TNA had under its founders, Russo and Jeff Jarrett, both of whom had previously worked for the WWF and WCW, respectively, in both companies before they founded TNA. Of course, Jim Cornette famously quoted that this was clearly a rib and it had really meant pits and ass. But instead, Vince Russo decided to disguise, to disguise it from something that came out of nowhere into what he decided was, in his vision, total non-stop action wrestling! Which it wasn't. Vince Russo decided to have the brilliant idea of bringing Dixie Carter in, and that's when it died. As soon as Dixie Carter, this, this woman who knew nothing about wrestling came in, and I've got, I've got nothing against people, I'm just saying. She decided it would be best to turn TNA into an even bigger shithole than it was when Russo was in charge. Even after Russo had allegedly left in 2010, but for some strange reason never really did, until it was rebranded as GFW and then Anthem Sports and then finally Impact Wrestling. It had to go through three name changes before finally deciding on the latter, which was, of course, Impact Wrestling, and they have never recovered since. Again, Vince McMahon's master plan at work. And meanwhile, Vince McMahon pushed guys like John Cena, a great wrestler in his own right, but very, very overhyped and very overrated, despite his qualities and capabilities. And they decided to push a third and a half generation wrestler named Roman Reigns. Real name, Joe Anoa'i. They pushed this guy from the moment his career started in 2010 in FCW at that moment before it became NXT under the name Roman Leakey.
That's something WWE won't tell you, but that was his original ring name. Then, of course, they renamed it to Roman Reigns, and the name stuck, and he was called up to the main roster, and as you might imagine, that's when everything went downhill. Vince Kennedy McMahon decided that since he had no idea what his product was anymore, he just decided to go the way of Vince Russo and basically turn it into a literal shite fest. And that especially started from the moment Raw went three hours on its thousandth episode in July of 2012. It has never recovered since. So... Vince McMahon decided to buy out all these companies, he bought out all these things, for whatever reason, and at the end of the day, he just made himself look like an even more unbearable jack-off. So, I don't know, make what you want of it. Either way, you're red, white, and screwed six ways to Sunday. Meanwhile, there are very other there are various other competitors, such as New Japan Pro Wrestling, Ring of Honor Wrestling, and the now forming AEW All Elite Wrestling, which had its first show called All In a couple months ago, prior to its official formation as All Elite Wrestling, because Cody Bucks, I mean Cody Bucks, Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks decided to found a promotion. And they had this guy from a very, very well-off family worth billions of dollars. And they had this guy, last name Khan. He was a big fan of wrestling and he decided to be their main booker. Because this was a legitimate product. And everything is, of course, in AEW legitimate. They want to make wins and losses matter again. Because in WWE, we all know damn well that wins and losses never really matter. Unless, of course, you're John Cena, unless you're Roman Reigns, unless you're Goldberg, unless you're Brock Lesnar, unless you're the New Day. New Day! I just had to put that out there. As you might imagine, many of the people working for WWE saw AEW as a legitimate opportunity to abandon the product that for many years has been stifling their creative control and pretty much rendering it useless because everybody that works for WWE is a slave to Vincent Kennedy McMahon and Kevin Dunn. Dun, 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 Star Wars reference. Also, Cultaholic reference. Also, King Ross reference. Also, Ross Tweedell reference because reasons. So people started leaving the company left and right, and they're still leaving the company now, the latest of which would arguably be Ziggler, Brock Lesnar, Dean Ambrose, and Hideo Itami. Four vastly underutilized talents who were being completely wasted on this shit show known as Monday Night Raw, and meanwhile, Finn Balor is probably going to leave the company sooner or later. I've heard that at some point, quite a few other people are going to leave the company sooner or later. In addition to the people who have already left, namely CM Punk, namely Hulk Hogan, who they rehired specifically to hype their Crown Jewel show, and then to promote the passing of Mean Gene Okerlund, in a series of unfathomable flubs that I'm not going to describe to you, because let's face it, they're that bad. So technically, Hulk Hogan doesn't count, because he's a lifer. And then, of course, among those people who have left WWE, I'm talking about... Let me see here. CM Punk left. Ryback left, that's one. I know that Batista left in 2014 because of his botched return that, quite frankly, Vince McMahon had no idea what to do with, but he recently came back on the thousandth episode of SmackDown Live, supposedly to pull a rib on Triple H, citing that Triple H never really beat him in the ring. So this might lead to a WrestleMania match, 
either at the 35th event this year, the 36th one next year, which is reportedly taking place in a city that has hosted WrestleMania before. Not Minneapolis, Minnesota, like so many rumors have cited prior. Okay. The bottom line is simple. It is so simple, you could literally just spell it out. The AEW effect is all over WWE, and people left and right being underutilized. Oh, by the way, Finn Balor is probably... Oh, I mentioned Finn Balor before? Yeah. I probably said his name twice, but we'll just... We'll just pretend like I didn't say it before, so we'll just count it as the first time. Although it really is the second, not the first. WWE has been vastly criticized by several wrestling fans who I have come to appreciate online in the form of Cedric, also known by his moniker Wrestling Jesus, and Jerry D., also known by his YouTube moniker, JD from NY206. Even though Wrestling Jesus has reappeared and disappeared from YouTube time and time again, under all these different accounts in the last few years, it is still apparent that WWE has only gotten worse since Wrestling Jesus started his wrestling commentary career on YouTube. Criticizing WWE for their nonsensical, illogical booking and otherwise shitty entertainment. The day that Monday Night Raw went to three hours in July of 2012 was the day that they took wrestling out of WWE. And we all know what WWE stands for. No, it isn't Walk with Elias. No, it isn't World's Worst Entrepreneur. No. It literally stands for, we waste everyone. Everyone! Jesus Christ. Hopefully this won't get copyrighted, but if this does get a copyright claim, I'll just ignore it because I don't give a fuck. So there you go. The point I'm trying to make is so simple. It is so simple. Listen to me. Listen to me. In the long run, even though it has these billions of dollars, billions of dollars, Titus World Slide! Titus O'Neil reference. Also, Prime Time Players reference because Darren Young was a member of that stable. Allegedly. <sighs> Did I mention Titus Catering? You know how many WWE wrestlers are in Titus Catering? Y you'll never guess. There are literally dozens of wrestlers that WWE has signed that they are not using. If you sign these people, you're supposed to use them! That's the whole purpose! Anyway, WWE is in a shit face corner that it is never going to get out of because once AEW finally gets off the ground and does its double or nothing show in Vegas and lands its television deal later this year in 2019, of course there's going to be a show that they promote on TV, possibly on TNT or TBS. It could be either or. I mean, at this point, it probably would be both. But AEW's Cody Bucks and... Not Cody Bucks, damn it. Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks have decided to name their weekly program Tuesday Night Dynamite. Because, of course, why, why wouldn't you name it Tuesday Night Dynamite? Because it's Dynamite! <laughs> Good times! You know, because Jimmy Walker... 
Anyway, WWE is without a doubt dead. All of its titles, excluding the ones in NXT, are dead. And they have absolutely no prestige whatsoever because they allow wrestlers, wrestlers, I say that very loosely, like Chubby Trashley. Yeah, Chubby Trashley. You, you didn't expect me to say that to all you Bobby Lashley marks out there. Keep in mind, I rarely talk about WWE in my videos. But it's best that I talk about them now because, well... The time is right. It is so simple because at the end of the day, no matter how you look at it, it is all right there. WWE is afraid of AEW and AEW is not going to compete with WWE, although they have quite a few of their superstars, or if not now, they will in the weeks to come, namely Dolph Ziggler. Most likely CM Punk, because CM Punk has teased a wrestling return, but he's never going back to WWE. You can, to all you Sean's viewing people out there who believe that CM Punk's returning to WWE, it's not going to happen. It is never going to happen. You know why? Because CM Punk is going to AEW, most likely. Yeah. I said it. If you don't like it, go fuck a duck and suck a big fat one. The point I'm trying to make is simple. This post-mortem that I'm delivering of WWE is, without question, a very fitting one. Because y you think, there are 36 writers in WWE, right? 36 writers who try to produce FIVE WEEKLY SHOWS every single week. Not counting NXT and its English counterpart, NXT UK. Which technically would bring it up to seven. Seven shows a week. One on Monday. Three on Tuesday, namely SmackDown Live, NXT, and of course NXT UK. Main event, Superstars, well... It was Superstars, but inevitably that most likely got cancelled. Or maybe it's still running. I don't know. I haven't wikipedia it. Maybe I should. And then I'll give you an update on what I found on WWE's Superstars program when I put a description in this video upon loading it to YouTube. By the way, speaking of YouTube, YouTube is dead. Should we, should we just... Okay, should we just send in a metaphor... To describe how YouTube is going literally down the tubes and shooting the crap out of itself right now, it it's literally a shit explosion. We'll just we'll just say that. point I'm trying to make, it is, it is absolutely clear, and I want to stress this to you personally, my viewers. The point that I'm trying to make is very, very simple. WWE is dead. Wrestling in that company is dead, and it has been since 2012. WWE as a godforsakenly general whole is Exactly as George Styles put it in his infamous shoot promo from 2006. When Joey Styles said that WWE was a circus. Because that's what it is, people. It is a circus. 
It is not sports entertainment. It is not pro wrestling. It is the physical wrestling equivalent of a Barnum and Bailey circus show. Except Vince Kennedy McMahon is Barnum and Kevin Dunn is Bailey. McMahon, Dunn, Barnum and Bailey. The two duos are practically synonymous with each other. I will leave this episode off on a very stern note with this. I have not been uploading stuff to my YouTube channel for some time because I'm a lazy piece of shit. I'm lazy as fuck. And I upload videos whenever I want. If you don't like it, then I don't like it any more than you do, but don't bitch about it, okay? Just because I don't post a video every two hours like some people do, and even though I don't do this for money, because let's face it, I disabled monetization in my videos because YouTube is a piece of crap. And I say that with the utmost respect because as much as I like being on YouTube, uploading videos is becoming harder and harder for many of you, if not all of you, and oh, by by the way, they they uh they recently decided to disable sharing because as of January 31st, they're no longer allowing you to share videos manually and automatically via YouTube's sharing links. So you're gonna have to do it manually from now on. So if you have a Facebook account, copy this URL to your Facebook and share it with as many people as you can. If you have a Twitter, copy and paste that to your URL and share that with as many people as you can. If you have an Instagram, copy this URL of this YouTube video with your friends on Instagram and so on with, with DeviantArt, with Fur Affinity, with, with Instagram. Did I say Instagram already? I meant to say Snapchat because Snapchat is a place where pedophilia is relaying. I mean, you know, I don't know. Snapchat is a fucking fail. That's why I don't have one over there. But I do have a blogger account that I share my videos on. On there. Well, I used to before they disabled sharing of videos through automatically linking and, I mean, linking, linking stuff. You understand? By the way, Okay, can, can we can we just play that metaphor for YouTube again, except this time do it in a WWE manner? Because that would be much more appropriate. Thank you. And that's going to do it for this episode of Scully Goes Wide. I've been Kevin the Skull Anderson. You've been my fellow subbers and YouTubers and fellow social mediators. So have a nice day. And if you don't like how things are here in America, just remember, in every other country, literally every other country, it is so much worse. Have a nice day. Is that what you're trying to tell me?